it works. The SD card is actually recording data from the real-time clock and the voltage sensor. Let me uh, stop this and show you what it took to make it happen. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is figure out how we're going to hook these things up. So, on the screen, you can see that there is a SD card reader and a real-time clock module, which is the so setup that I will be using. I do need to adjust some of these pinouts for how they are connecting up. If I uh, blow that up a little bit so it's a little easier to read. And one of the first things you'll notice is it has an Arduino Uno, and I'm using the Arduino Mega. So there are some slight differences in those pins. And I will uh, cover that as I do these install inserts. But let's uh, take a look at, at this and we'll go from there. So here's my work area. Here's my SD card. Here's my real-time clock module. It's got the battery in it to keep things going. It is the uh, DS3231. Uh, and there are, there's words or little indicators that tell you which pin is what right on the, the unit itself. So you can line up this information with the information that's on the uh, diagram that I just showed you, which is right here, and then convert that over to way it looks on the Arduino Omega. And let me pull that out. So here's the blown up image of the uh, Key Studio Arduino Omega that I'm using, and it tells you everything that's special about it. And this is the part that we need here. We're just talking about the SDA pins and the SCL. Those are that's like your clock line and and your you know different functions that are taking place as as a part of the I two C or IIC or I squared C, however you prefer to uh, pronounce it. So those this is the pinouts that I'll be referencing in doing this work. So. In looking at this, the first thing we need to do is hook up the real-time clock module, which will be the bottom one here. So I will attach that to the breadboard. And so I've got my breadboard here. And I have already hooked up a couple of wires here, as you can see. So the black wire is ground. The real-time clock module uses 3.3 volts as its reference. So I took a pin or a wire from the 3.3 volt output of the Arduino, ran it over to what I'll call the south side of the breadboard, the bottom side, and I did the same thing for a ground wire because it's naturally going to need ground and voltage as well as these other SDA pins. All right, so then from that standpoint, oops, we have to hook up the SDA pin up and the SDA is pin 20 on the Arduino so then SDA is this one and we'll plug him into pin 20 and he just slides right in then the SCL or the clock is next and that goes to pin 21 and that's hooked up and so that was pretty straightforward and those are all of the pins for the clock it looks like it's just the four pins Let's look at our image one more time we've got our four wires hooked up for our clock, so now let's do the SD card. I'll plug in, go back to here, look at the SD card, and it also tells you which pin is what and how it connects. So I'll hook that up, but because the SD card uses 5 volts, I'll put that on the north side of the board versus the south side, like last time. Okay, so we need to take our data pin, or our CS pin, or our select pin, if you will, 
And we are going to plug that into the breadboard. And use, we're going to use pin four because that's what was in the example. And at least for now, I see no other reason to change it. And then we need to hook up the ground and voltage I already have. I've been using the red for the plus five, black for the ground. So those are hooked up as you can see. <clears throat> on a breadboard, anything in that line is all on the same pin. So all, when I jumper this black wire over from the negative to the pin side of the board, then that anything that's connected in that row is also connected to ground. So that makes it really convenient for doing this stuff. All right, now I need to go for the MISO. The MISO is pin 50. So I'll connect up pin 50. Ground 53, 51, so that makes that 50. Then the MOSI is pin 51. So I'll connect up pin 51 on that side and pin. Fifty one on the Arduino sign. It's almost like something stuck in there. There it goes. And then pin SLCK goes to pin fifty two. So then we'll hook up. So CK to pin. Sorry for my elbow or everything being in the way. Just kind of a tight spot. So that's all the wiring. And let's just double check that. 51, 52. All right. So that looks good. So let's look at the Arduino code. I got the Arduino code directly from uh, Arduino themselves. They have a uh, really cool web tutorial and it, they give you the code right on the Arduino web page on how to do this as an example. And that's how I have hooked it up. I've got a little bit more data here. Uh, for my output because they're not t specifically talking about a voltage regulator like I am but that is in so now let's go ahead and copy and bring this over to here we scroll through you can see we've got our you know, SD card defines the real-time clock defines what I'm going to call the file name to store everything by year month day CSV is a comma rated comma separated value and so that's very common to import into spreadsheets to make this easy to import and run with here's our voltage reference again sensor delays here's our information from the voltmeter from before and now we're talking about the new stuff with setting up the real time clock if you can't find it what do you do and this will automatically set it via the computer and I leaving this part here this is how you would manually set it so if I get that uh, display going with an input then I'll be able to manually change it that way and then if the SD card is present or not it uh, warns you and stops and here's how you calculate the years and how you're doing your prints with the different pieces of information that show here to, to give you your year hyphen month hyphen day comma day of the week comma the time comma the voltage and that's all done here with these various print statements and either serial to send it to the serial output or log file to send it to the log file 
So if we do that and we hit the go button, it compiles and it blows up. That's because it's not turned on. And we turn it on and we tell it to go again. And we go over to our serial monitor and there we go. We are recording data, or at least it says we are. So let's go ahead and stop this again. Hit the wrong button. So we stop that, we go to our work area. We can then take out the SD card. I just have a little, I think it's a two gig SD card for now. Yep, two gig. And I did find that they make little SD card to USB adapters that will work with your cell phone. So if you've got an Android phone, um, at least an Android, if it's an iPhone, I'm assuming it'll work for those too, or at least if not the specific one, uh, one that would work, but it has the ability to hook up USB, micro SD, and full size SD cards. Plug in our SD card. Plug in our reader. Unlock our phone. Our storage. We look at today's date. And here's all the data. And so you can see I was playing and here's, here we are with the day, the date, the time, and the value of the reading. So you could take this, put it into your favorite program, graph it, show you where you're at, and then over time as we add in for future episodes, with your oil pressure and your fuel pressure and your engine RPM and all the rest of it, you'll have all the data all on a single line in a single instance to then be able to record and compare and graph to show different aspects of what your engine is doing. So pretty straightforward. Um, this one was an easy one. So I wanted to get a recording out and show you about it. Hopefully you found this useful. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you on the next episode. Thank you. Take care. God bless.